Jesus. Come on. Of course, I'm not doing so good myself, so. <clears throat> Ech. person okay I'll wait a few minutes um oh no 11 according to my phone <sighs> sorry if I um seem a little um out of air that's mostly because I well let's just say what kept me uh from getting on here before three o'clock was you know your body decides to say, hey, it's, um, we need to uh, use the facilities. Hey, Simone's girl. So, of course, that's where I was. Um, I think between the coffee I had this morning and, um, my breakfast or lunch, however you want to put it, um, decided to talk back to me. But anyhow, we're not talking about that. Um, my bowels are my concern. <laughs> so, sorry for the for the um, TMI. But, everybody's decided to lay down because mom, every time, you know, mom, when she eats, she's got to go lay down. Um, we put the dog down so mom can nap and Jerry's out in the living room doing whatever. I just hope I don't hear her barking because... It's a combination of, um, and it's annoying for one, and two, I don't want it to be disruptive. Simone's girl, if you cannot hear me, let me know, because I did not plug in my mic or anything like that. Um, whew, oh boy. So, uh, I know Simone's girl was on my, um, or I should say Jay Ann's, Sunday Live, and I'm trying to think of ways to, um, change it, because, um, okay, good, um, I don't mind her having her Sunday Live, but when she wants me to be there next to her to do it, I feel like, why, uh, you don't let anybody get a edge in, a word in, ed, a word in, period, um, my mom really has to interrupt her to read comments. And every time I try to, to interrupt, to put in my two cents, um, Jay kind of, like, tries to talk over me or get me to stop talking, period. And I'm like, oh, why am I here? You know, um, I can't read or keep up with comments like my mom can. And... If she's not letting me put my two cents in or uh, talk, what's the purpose of me being there during the live? Um, so, I'm not throwing my wife under the bus or anything like that. It's just, it's one of those things where I'm like, if I can't say anything, why am I here? And usually, Jerry tries to talk over me when I'm trying to put in, like, my, not my version of the truth, but basically my knowledge, um, or what I know, what I see on a daily basis, and I've had a few things to, uh, say to her off camera on a different, um, yeah, um, exactly, um, but this is what Jerry wants, and so, you know, I try to give Jerry what she wants, she does, on many different occasions, uh, give me what I want, but not not on a live, basically. So I'm just kind of like, okay. Hey, Sheila. Um, did not see you on this morning's live. Or if you were there, I missed you. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm here. <laughs> but, um... 
Okay, you know, that's fine. I know, Sheila, you're like, you know, you're like me at times where don't say much unless, unless I feel like saying something, which sometimes doesn't always work in my favor. But at any time during this live, you guys can't hear me, let me know. I'll put it on my mic. Um, not really. Uh, her version of PT is getting up out of the bed to go to the bathroom or getting up out of the bed to go to her chair. Um, okay, Sheila. Uh, if she does any forms of PT, it's either when I'm not in the room with her or... You know, I can't tell. Which irritates me when she says she does PT and I'm like sitting next to her going, you know. Basically, if she's talking and I know she won't let me say a word in edgewise because she'll rebuke it, look at my facial expression. You'll you, you learn to be able to tell when um, I'm looking at her like, uh, whom are you trying to convince um you know that's why i i don't want to um well that's the thing is now that she's not doing um chemo treatment she can get onto um oh god i forgot what they're, they're called um but what it is is the program for people like Jerry, that they come in um, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday, rarely, very rarely on Sunday, and it's usually like a nurse that comes in to ask her questions to see how she's doing, somebody else to come in and do like in bed PT, whether it's stretching her, you know, stretching her legs, moving her legs about, things like that. But she's sister, and but she wants to tell me that. Um, the reason why she doesn't do PT is because that hole in her spine and her hip and this and that and other thing. And I'm just like, the only way you're going to fix certain things and make thing, certain things feel better is to do the PT. I'm one of those people who used to not do PT because I didn't like, I did not like the, the physical activity of PT. If I was going to be moving my body, it was going to be for a purpose other than just laying in bed, stretching my, you know, doing the bicycle or the, uh, I forgot what they call it. Um, they've got different names for different exercises, but, um, she's not even doing the ones that she can be laying on her back to do. Um, I'm kind of thinking that maybe, maybe if I came in there and did some of my old PT to strengthen my back and my core, um, she might do some of it with me, but I don't know. Um, of course, I don't know how well I'll be able to do it with a dog bouncing around, but we'll see what I can do. Um, no, Simone's girl, I do not think the dog should be eating um, anything in the bed, whether it's a, a, a snack or a treat. Um, the dog bones and the dog treats, I don't mind her having, but I just, uh, the crackers, the crumbly cookies and, and dog bones and dog biscuits and whatnot, I don't like that in my bed, you know, and I've tried to explain time and time again, I don't want her eating on the bed, I don't care how the blankets are set up because always, there's always going to be a crumb that gets, somehow gets into the bed. And no, I don't like the idea of a dog eating in the bed, period. I hate it when she comes out here, she'll grab a mouthful of kibble, come in the bedroom, jump on the bed, and start eating her kibble on the bed. And I'm just like, I'm about ready to tell Jerry that if this kind of stuff keeps on happening, I'm not gonna sleep in the bed. I'll sleep on the floor in here, I'll go sleep on the couch, I don't care. I'm not sleeping in that bed if the dog can eat on that bed. It's one thing when she takes a mouthful of kibble and goes into the living room and eats it on the living room floor, but not in my bed. But she don't want to, she does not want to listen to me. You know, she's like, oh, I'm like, okay, fine. 
you sleep in the bed by yourself from now on, you know. And that's the way I feel. Um, sorry, my nose is starting to act up, and I don't have any incense for going or anything like that going in here. It's just my allergies. Probably because of the fact that I do need to do some cleaning in here. But with all the other projects that Jerry wants me to do first and foremost, it's hard to do anything I want to do. Um, yeah, exactly. And one of the reasons why she's having those wound issues is because she has not been going to her wound care doctor like she has been because it seems like every day that she's supposed to have a wound care treatment or go see her her um, main oncologist or whatever you call them, um, she flakes out, you know. And I'm getting tired of calling for her to let them know, hey, yeah, she's not feeling good, she's not going to make it again. I am pretty sure they already realized that the reason why Jerry is doing this is because Jerry doesn't want, you know, I don't, I, I, I you know what? I told Jerry the other day, I said, if you don't go to your doctor's appointments, and I don't care what condition you're in, you're going to go to your doctor's appointment, or I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to either call some kind of healthcare group saying, hey, look, um, I love my wife, but she doesn't want to go see her doctor. She's recovering from, well, she's got cancer, and she's recovering from wounds and, and treatment and all that stuff and she doesn't want to go to her doctors and she won't listen to me so can you guys do something um i don't really want to do that but it, it feels like that's what exactly i'm gonna have to do um jim i left a comment on your last live which i wasn't able to join that maybe you should do some vlogs on the book you're going through on self-care um sheila um I've been thinking about that effect, uh, what was it, Saturday? No, Friday when I did a live. Um, somebody also suggested I should do more vlogs um, on the book I'm reading. And I was kind of like, at first I was like, well, I'm already half through, halfway through the book or a quarter way through the book. I, I, yeah, I guess I can go back from the beginning and, and you know, go over some of the, some of the things that, that was like a key factor for me. Um, maybe share with us what you are learning from it. Yeah, I, I've been thinking about that. Um, I was wondering if you have a date for your camper. Um, right now, um, Mona, um, has a soft cast on her foot. So she's waiting for that to to uh, to to recuperate from that little um, accident. Um, all I know is she said that it would be here sometime in the month of July, or month of April. Yeah, April. Uh, sorry, my my brain is thinking about things in July already. Um, don't know why, but it should be here soon. You know. I'm not jumping the gun or, you know, harassing Mona about it because I understand she's got her circumstances and her father's coming with her and they want to join us in a live and um, her father is going to teach me or show me how to operate the camper, how to unfold it and fold it back up and then... Um, Uh, Mom, myself, and her Mona's father are going to talk about our experience in Germany because he was in Germany as well. I think he was getting to Germany as we were leaving Germany, I, I think. Not positive because I don't remember exactly what was said. Um, can Jerry call herself and... Oh, I made her call, call him and cancel his appointments on a number of occasions because I'm like... I know I'm supposed to be your caretaker and whatnot, but I do not want to call anybody to cancel the appointment because far as I'm concerned, if I had the strength and energy, I'd be dragging your ass to the, you know, dragging her ass to the car and dragging her ass to the doctor's appointment because this, this skipping appointments because she doesn't feel good when nine times out of 10, what's making her not feel good is not going to the doctor. Um, that's just my thoughts. Um, 
Yeah, it is too bad Marnie is injured. Let's see here. Sheila, what did you say? Do you think it will be hard for Dre to go camping with all that special needs as far as wound care, the need to get to a bathroom quickly, um, special dietary needs? Well, Sheila, we're trying to... Um, we're trying to, to change our dietary, um, our current diet, uh, uh, to help meet her needs. Um, as for the bathroom, well, luckily the camper has a bathroom. The only thing would be, you know, getting off the road into a, um, way station or one of those, one of the different locations, uh, that have restrooms, um, so I'm not, like, super worried about all that. Um, we've already done, like, a road trip last July. We did a road trip to Colorado. We've done many, many a road trips from here to, to Texas. Um, we did one or two trips before she got sick with cancer to... to visit Ohio, my family in Ohio, and then one or two times, um, to, well, one that I can remember, uh, to, uh, go to her younger brother's, uh, funeral in New York. Um, so road tripping is not my concern. My concern is more along the lines of road conditions, you know, the you know, how bumpy is the road going to be because I don't want to jar her back or anything like that. So I'm, you know, right now, I think I would rather have her get a little bit more, you know, a little better so we can go and enjoy road trips. Excuse me, my, my tablet is like glaring right in my glasses. So that's the glare. Um, let's see here. Oh, don't count me out yet. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Yes, um, you said that on our live this morning. I just don't know how many people who are on my live right now that, that know what's going on. Um, I know from my cancer journey, I get anxious about going to the doctors because I don't know what... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's part of Jerry's problem, which is causing a lot of other, like, psychological problems, is she just, um, what we call white coat syndrome. You know, she's already on, um, she went Friday to her primary, and her primary put her on a bunch of new medications. Um, so, yeah, she will be on a lot of new meds. Um. Is it a far drive? Oh, okay. Can you drive somewhere from your house in Missouri for the day to just relax? I would love to, Simone. I would love to. But the thing is, um, Jerry is becoming... Well, she's about as needy as she was when... She first discovered her cancer situation, but a little less because Jerry Ann does get up out of the bed and go to her seat next to the bed uh, and stays, you know, sits there for as long as she can tolerate it. Um, today, she's out in the living room. She's, she said she's going to try to stay out there for most of the day because we have a lot of things to go over. Um, let's see. The lack of movement is such a... Yeah, it is. It is a very vicious cycle. Um, yeah, the less you move, the less energy you have, etc. I don't pretend to know what it would be like to have cancer, but if you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. Um, that's part of my problem, is not that I don't use it. 
I am too hyper, you know, I get my days where I'm like, eh, I don't feel like doing nothing. And I do bare minimum, but I still move about. And then there are other days where it's like, I am overloaded with energy and just want to take on the world type of feelings. But yeah, I do know the uh, the cost of, of um, not moving around enough. Um, I even know it from my own personal experience because I had to be in bed, non-moving, for three days straight as a, as a teenager back in Arizona because I had what they call, well, the doctor called a subagellian hernia. So she wanted me to basically lay on my back and not move. Um, Mom had to bring me my food. I had to find ways to eat it. Lying, eat my food lying on the back without choking. So, and then after those three days, it was like my knees didn't want to, my knees wanted to buckle. You know, they didn't want to hold up my, my body. So I kind of understand what you're saying there, Sheila. Um, let's see here. When Jerry went to Texas and you were eating better, Jim and taking better care of yourself. You were flourishing even mentally. I don't wish you, I I wish you could do more of that now. Now, yeah, I kind of told Jerry jokingly, um, at least I think I did, that when we get the, uh, the camper trailer and we can move it about on our own uh, the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to take that camper trailer and find myself a little campground and set up the camper trailer by myself for at least one night. Um, not only because I need to get out of here for a while, but I want to see if, if I can handle um, operating the trailer and doing everything that needs to be done to basically use the trailer as a camper um, because they have, according to Mona's specs on, on that trailer, there's one queen size and one double. And um, now I know from when Jerry had a queen size back in New York, it was not fun to sleep in the two of us. So, and Jerry's like, I don't care if you're sleeping in a different bed as long as, as, long as we're in the same room. So I figured she can, you know, use the queen for herself and I'll sleep in the double and we'll see where the dog sleeps, hopefully with Jerry. Um, so, yeah. Um, Jim, how do you personally deal with the frustration with asking Jerry to do things to help her health? <sighs> I've gotten to the point where Every time I try to get Jerry to do something that would help her out for the better, whether it's, you know, bugging her to go to her doctor's office, you know, doctor's appointments instead of canceling them, to getting up out of the bed and moving around more, if she decides that she doesn't want to do any of that to better her health, I just look at her and go, I can't force you to do nothing, and if you choose not to do it, I don't want to hear any bitching and moaning about how sore you are or how difficult it is for you to move around, things like that. Now, her back her back wounds, I can understand the issues with her back wounds because, I mean, like she said earlier, you can't control how you roll over or anything like that. So you can't control if the bandage or tape or anything like that is going to come um, come loose and move to a different location, which could cause pain, or it could bleed into her nightgown, into her her, her sheets, her pillowcases, that thing, kind of thing. But I, I look at her like, look, you say you're fighting it, you say you want to live long to, a little bit longer, you say you want to do all these things, but you're not doing anything to improve your body. So it's one of those, like, I'm not going to fight a uh, losing battle. I'm just going to stand back and go, you made your choices. Um, I know that might sound uh, harsh, but I, it's just, 
It's gotten to that point where it's like, I'm tired of fighting with you. I'm tired of fighting with her, her and all of her, you know, oh, I don't feel like going to work, you know. She tells me, I don't feel like going to the, to the doctor's office. And then 30 minutes, 40 minutes after her appointment was supposed to be, uh, she was supposed to be going to her appointment. She's full of energy and, and don't look or act like she's uh, sick or anything like that. And, I kind of know how my parents felt when I was a kid because I did the same thing. And because of my my awkward body temperature, you know, first thing in the morning, yeah, my, my temperature is going to be higher than normal because it hasn't regulated to the morning cycle and whatnot. Um, yeah, it would be good for me to get out, you know, you know, she knows how frustrated I'm getting. She knows how I'm, like, having psychological issues and whatnot because of all the, you know, gym this, gym that, or just, you know, I look around my house going, yeah, mom's helping with dishes. That's great. Um, but there's, like, 80, uh, excuse me, 90% of the house that nobody else touches but me. And it's really hard for me to clean my house, do all the organization or, you know, switching things around that we talked about to make this house uh, presentable for sales and then take care of her, you know. And it, it, it's, why do you have to take Oreo with you when Jerry Ann has her appointment? Can't Oreo stay in her kennel? Well, that's the thing is, if she's in that kennel for too long, she starts to bark and whine and try to move, you know, literally she tries to move that kennel on her own. And the other reason why is I don't want my mom to have to deal with all of Oreo's antics and, you know, barking and stuff that basically drives my mom crazy. So it's, it's one of those like, I'd rather take the dog with me and deal with the dog than leave with my mom who is getting up there in age. She's frail. Um, she's skinny. So it's like, geez, mom, the wind blows you just right and they're gonna knock you over. Let alone having a 50 plus pound dog jump off you. Or jump up at you. Um, Let's see here. I know I'm a cancer journey. I can only use breadcrumbs and can't use, wait a minute, use not breadcrumbs, I'm sorry. All right, and can I use paper tape? I can only use the other tape and still the stay that's how I have to treat my sores. Okay. Um, or sores. I'm sorry. Um, I can understand. Um, Jerry's skin is very sensitive uh, to certain kinds of adhesives. And the only tape that sticks to her body sometimes uh, causes, you know, a rash or redness or something like that. So there's not really much that we have that we can use that will keep the bandage in place. But the thing is, the way she tosses and turns at night, plus the clothes that she wears, um, it causes the tape to come undone from the bandage, but not her skin, which I wish it was the other way around. Um, but... Um, she used to wear bras that helped keep the band the bandage in place. But the problem with that is the pressure from the bra against the bandage, causing the bandage to become like the, 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 the wound area that oozes and whatnot, the bandage becomes part of that scab. So when I go to try to take the, the bandage off, it takes some of the scabbing off, which causes it to bleed. So it's, it's like one of those, um, I heard about it once 
way back when. It was called liquid skin. And basically what the, it was in the military and what they used to do with it is it looked like a bandage, but what it was is you put it over the wound and you pat it down and then you pull like part of the paper and whatnot off and you see like the clear bandage and whatnot. So you can, it, it looks like a, it looks like just liquid bandage. It looks like, like when you were younger or when Gen X was younger and we cut our finger and we didn't have a band-aid, um, especially my cousins here in, in Missouri would take super glue, the old fashioned super glue and put it over the wound and like clean up the area. So the super glue was just on the wound um so it, it, you know there's a lot of weird in fact, a lot of things from the old days that i look back and go how many of these ideas became something different here in modern day age like liquid skin i don't know um Um, Jim, don't take this the wrong way. Should you have gotten a dog when there was so much you needed to do with the health issues and keeping up with the house? Um, Simone, here's the argument. Okay. When we had Cece as Jerry's caretaker... Um, she had brung over a puppy, a male puppy. And I, when she left with the puppy, I was a little upset because it's like, oh, I want a dog. But the thing is, when Jerry goes, do you really want, Jerry asked me, do you really want a dog? And I said, yes and no. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, yes, I'd love to have a dog because I love animals. But, and here was my, my reason for not getting a dog. One, can we afford the dog? Two, do we really have time or room in our lives right now uh, for the dog? Who's actually going to be taking the dog? Because I really don't want to take a do to care of a dog when I've got enough on my plate as is. Well, Jerry didn't hear all that. Jerry just went out and got the dog. And I'm like... Cute, whatnot, but um, what happened to the words of why I didn't want a dog? So, it's a it's a big headache and and a big argument that we keep on you know keep on having and you know she's like, what do you want me to do? You know, give the dog away? You know, put it in. And the thing about I love animals. I, and once I have an animal at my house, it's really hard for me to say get rid of it and mean it. But the other thing is, Missouri is really bad um, about like puppy mills and just quantity or quality, yeah, quality more than quantity, um, quality of, of, you know, how long are they gonna last in a puppy mill? let alone weather condition when you take it out of the puppy mill, what do you have to deal with? Because a lot of puppy mills don't take care of those dogs. They just put them, put them in cages and whatnot and feed them, and that's it. You know, I've heard some really bad stories about how Missouri is about those things. Did your, teach, did your book teach you anything about dealing with frustration? Well... The book doesn't teach you exactly about frustration. It teaches you how to get into a, a, a frame of mind where you're happier and you're more positive and you're not letting things um, get the better of you. I still have moments or, or times of frustration. So my frustration is not totally gone, but I don't get as how do I use the words? I guess the only words I can use w would be I don't get as, like, manic. Or, not manic. Um, 
I don't get to that point where I just want to like storm out of the house or scream at the top of my lungs, you know. I just, you know, sometimes I sit there and go, I need a moment to myself. Let me go sit down, calm down, let things go through my head, try to try to find a, a better way of dealing with things. And Jer Jerry Ann is learning that when I tell her I need a moment to myself, um, sometimes she gets mad because she's in the middle of a whatever, you know, a rant or however you want to put it. Um, but she realizes that more and more it's best to let me take my moment and then re readdress the problem. Let's see here. But it, it's taught me so much on, on, you know, life in general. Um, but yeah, um, Would I consider rehoming my dog? No. The thing is, once once an animal in my home becomes family, and literally we start consider, considering the animal family, um, it's hard to just um, let him go. Um, but I understand what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying, Renee, but no. We've never considered that. I've... Yeah, there are times where she's frustrating and it's like, can you, you know, especially when it's cooking time. It's like, can you, Jerry, can you get the dog out of the kitchen? Because um, I don't want her, I don't want her under my feet. Um, granted, she, she's learned, um, Oreo has learned to just lay down at the other end of the kitchen by the, by the refrigerator. Um, that way she can mo monitor what's going on and, maybe be able to grab a, a tidbit of food if it falls off the uh, you know, pot or stove, um, which we try not to let her do because we don't want her to burn her mouth or anything like that from you know trying to grab a piece of hot food. Um, it's an unfortunate situation. I, could, I couldn't I could rehome my dog either once I have fallen in love with it even though it causes a lot of issues. The the thing about the thing about animals and the issues they do cause those issues are usually so small or so rare and in between that you can get over it pretty easily. Um, I busy myself with a lot of stuff and Oreo wants to know what's going on, wants to investigate, wants to be, you know, next to me or behind me. And sometimes I have to tell her to go lay down, you know, things like that. Because when it comes to, like, making food, I make two meals a day. I make breakfast and I make dinner. And some nights I don't even do dinner because it's like, I'm too tired. Let's do a fin, fin for yourself. Or, oh, I forgot to pull out meat because, well, I need to go back to my old way of, of, um, creating a weekly meal list of, okay, today we're going to have chicken, tomorrow we're going to have ground beef, and after that we're going to have pork, and then we're going to have fish sandwiches, and then we're going to, you know, either do some, you know, we try to mix and match, basically, you know. And for me... A lot of times is all right. Tell me what meats I have. I can figure out. I can figure out meals just by the meat. So, um, how much exercise does Oreo get? She seems. Oh, she gets a lot of exercise. I mean, first thing in the morning, I let her outside to run around to do her business. Sometimes she does this in-out game. You know. She wants you to let her out, but she wants you to come with her. So what happens is you let her out, she goes out, you close the door because it's too hot outside, and then she'll either turn around and like paw at the door, and when you start to open the door, she runs off. It's like, come play, come play, come play. It's getting out, it's getting nice outside. Come out, come out and play, come out and play. Um, which, Depending on what's going on around the house depends on if I can do it. Um, sometimes 
mom will go out there and play with her. One of the things that I found out today that I didn't realize is mom is waiting for a table or something to put next to the chair that's outside that she sits in so she has a place to put her Coke and her cigarettes. <clears throat> so I'm like, I got to find that, that camp table that's collapsible and put it out there for her. Which is kind of like, uh, 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 I forgot where I put it. I know it's over there with all that camping stuff. There's no camping stuff over here. So it's, you know, one thing or another, one thing or another I have to do, try to deal with. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sheila. Jim, as much as you like to be out in nature, when you get up in the morning, why not take Oreo for a walk? You know, I never thought about that. I have taken her for brief walks around the house, but not much longer than that. Um, it would do both of you good, some fresh air, and time to just think and breathe, you know. Let's see here, Sheila. Sheila, that is a great idea. Both Jim and Oreo would benefit. Oh, yeah, I know we would. Um, this time of year, because it's actually getting warmer, it's supposed to be in the 80s tomorrow and Tuesday, I think. I'd have to look, and then it's going to drop back down in the 60s with chances of rain. And I have to say, spring has went past summer back to fall. Well, that's the way it feels and whatnot, but I know, I know we're jumping into spring and it's almost, well, July will be summer, July, August will be the summertime, which I, it seems weird because, you know, you think, okay, August, uh, August, September, October is fall, um, duh. Late October, November, December, January, February is winter. Um, March or April to June is spring. And I know my months are not exactly 12 months apart, but um, or 12 months in total. But I've been saying this for a couple years now. Um, the atmosphere is changing, uh, the weather is changing, the seasons are changing. Um, as I put it one day when it was like, one, and one weekend, Friday to Monday, it was like Friday, nice and sunny. Saturday, it was chilly with a little bit of rain. Sunday was cold with a winter mix, and then Monday was back to, you know, decent temperatures, like upper 60s, you know. And I was like, okay, Mother Nature is having a hissy fit. She doesn't know if it's supposed to be spring, summer, fall, or winter. Because we just had three seasons, or four seasons, over a four-day period. And I just kind of went, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, they, they, a lot of people are saying that this last uh, solar eclipse was like, yeah, this now marks the beginning of the apocalypse. And I went, Um, we've already gone through famine, uh, war, uh, disease, uh, uh, what's the fourth horseman? Pestilence? Uh, the horsemen have been out riding, like, two years ago. They're just waiting for that one rider that nobody wants because that's the herald of the apocalypse and nobody's seen them yet. But with all the stuff going on in the Middle East, who knows? But I don't think about that no more because it used to cause way too much stress thinking about, you know, okay, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Yeah, we're we're seeing the horsemen. Now I'm just kind of like, whatever. You know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it. We can just hold on tight and you know, hope we're one of the chosen to go to heaven instead of staying down here during the apocalypse, you know. But, yeah. Um, 
Have you have plans change regarding moving um, to Colorado? <sighs> yes and no. <laughs> the reason why I said that is because we're not 100% sure what we're going to do. There's a lot of things that we had to think about between Jerry's um, doctors and medical people. She'd have to literally get a whole new team. Um, we would have to switch over our, our medical insurance. Um, there's a lot of things that we have to do. I would have to go, if I, if I want to get paid to take care of my wife, I'd have to go through a lot of probably, uh, testing and educational processing to, to see if, um, I can do it. Um, but now because, um, we don't know if I can get, um, SSID or SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Insurance, um, like Jerry has, because of my, um, my degenerative, um, back, basically, my neck and my, my lower back, um, so it, it's kind of like one of those, okay, um, but, um, we're not saying no to Colorado. We're just saying um, we're waiting for certain things to happen. Um, as Jerry said this morning, we're kind of waiting for um, a sign from the universe, which we kind of got today because Diane found in um, Canyon City two trailer homes right next to each other, and the two of them together would cost 90000 so, you know, there's a lot of different things that we're, we're we got to talk about tonight once everybody, once mom is done with her nap. But we have not ruled out Colorado, but we have not said yes. You know, so it, it, there's just a lot of different things we're, we're trying to figure out. Um... I'm going through some personal issues myself and I'm quickly learning if I want these to change. I have to commit to making changes to make things better in my life. Exactly. If you want anything done to be better in your life, you ha not only have to commit to making those changes, but you have to work on those changes. You have to work with yourself, your environment. Um, there's a lot of different things you have to uh, basically work on. Um, that's why when people call me lazy, I'm like, you do not understand how much I do, how much I work on, how hard I push myself. Um, but I don't argue with those people because it's those kind of people who don't don't realize there's a lot of stuff that happens off camera. Um, they just want to assume, you know, certain things, and you know, I, that's fine and dandy. My um my my brother-in-law and probably other people had this expression: "Don't make assumptions," because basically what you're doing is making an, an ass of yourself and the assumption. And, uh, of course, he had another saying attached to that. And I'm like, mm -mm, that's as far as it needs to go. I don't have to get into the graphics. But, you know, let's see here. So true. Uh, some of these comments are starting to come a little fast. Uh, a person needs to want to help themselves. However, stress can be difficult to continue to focus on. Yes, true. Very true on that. Um, uh, so true, Simone, but yet so important to maintain our own self-care. The oxygen mask theory. Exactly. The ox You know, as they say on the plane, you got to put your mask on first and then help, you know, whoever's next to you. Um... I know a lot of parents be like, no, 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 the kid has that. No. If you can't, if you don't put that oxygen mask on, you cannot breathe, you know, through the mask. And you're worried about your child first and foremost, which I can understand. I'm not a parent, but yeah, I'd probably be that kind of like, see how long I can hold my breath so I can put the, the kid's mask on. But let's say you, 
pass out before you get your kid's mask on. Well, guess what? Both you and your child are now either DOA, which I hate to say, or needing, you know, possibly having brain damage from whatever you might be breathing in. <coughs> uh, let's see. So I have to go back. Uh, oh, I went back uh, too far. Um, in my opinion, Jerry looks healthy enough to do more for herself. She is. Problem is she chooses not to because she's afraid of, of one thing or another. Which, basically between her depression and her fears, um, I think that's causing more problems for her than the actual physical pain. It's, it's kind of weird how you can have a physical pain, but your mind, if it decides to override your sense of trying to work on yourself and do things for yourself, your mind can literally paralyze you because of the fear. And that's why I try not to have fear in my life because it's like, I've, in fact, I've never been, I've never really had any fear in my life. I've been a very adventuresome kid um, moving around through every three years because the military made it easier for me to move and not be attached to things. Like, I look around this room and I'm like, if I had to live in a tiny home or if I had to live basically in an RV, um, a lot of the things I own, I wouldn't care if I got rid of it as long as I kept certain books you know, you know, clothing, enough clothing to basically clothe me for a week. And on the day before I put on my last pair of underwear, socks or whatever, you know, go to a laundry mat and clean my clothes. You know. I mean, I love the gifts that people have given me. I love the books that I bought. You know, I can't complain about much. I mean, yeah, there are times I look at some of Jerry's stuff and I even look at some of the clutter in here going, I need to purge. And Jerry's like, oh, no, you can't purge. We don't have enough to get rid of, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I got clothes in my closet that I barely wear. She's got clothes in the closet and the dresser she barely wears. Why are we holding on to stuff? Um, but I've gotten to the point where I was like, if there's a hole in my sock, I get rid of it. If there's a hole in my underwear, I get rid of it. Um, but I don't, like, just throw stuff out willy-nilly. It's like, can I afford to replace it? But I don't like holes in my socks. You know, and I hate that. Um, I'm very particular about th certain things. Um, hey, Nelly. Uh, that's all right. Um, let's see, where was I? Have I started processing? Uh, pers no, I have not started to fill out disability. I've got to go up to the. Well, I've got to go to the one place for um, my insurance because, for some reason, when they um, switched Jerry's insurance over, um, mine did not. Mine just kind of like disappeared. Um, so I got to deal with that. Then I gotta go up to the Social Security office and start filling paperwork. If, if unless I decide to do it online, I don't know. But you know, um, I do have to start doing that. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm gonna get it or not. Um, there's so many things going on that I don't talk to you guys about because it's it c combination of it's kind of personal and you don't really need to know everything I'm I'm dealing with. Um, but yeah, I'm, I gotta start the process for the uh, disability. Um, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with you, Simone, but tr yet I try to pretend I walk in other shoes so I try not to pass judgment on others. Uh, Sheila, you've never really, um, maybe I missed something in that, in the conversation, but I've never heard you or seen in writing on that you um, pass any kind of judgment. Uh, you're pretty much, uh, you know, you, you speak your mind, yes, um, and you do ask questions, but you don't, like, nothing comes out judgmental, basically is what I'm trying to say. 
Um, you know, yes, very true, Sheila. Deep breath and focusing on yourself is so important. If a person is not well themselves, it is very difficult to help others. Exactly. That's why when Jerry gets mad at me that I'm not helping her, I'm like, uh, I gotta help myself first, and I'm not, I'm not ready to, 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 I'm, I don't know when I'll be able to help anybody, because every time I think I've got things under control, something pops up, um, and usually it's caused by, I'm not gonna say Jerry, because Jerry's not the only one that, that causes my, causes me to have issues with one form or another, there's, you know, all kinds of different things that, that trigger me, um, Hey, Nelly, good to see you again. Uh, no, you're not too late. I don't know if I said that already. I'm sorry. Um, no one can ever walk in another, walk, walk in anyone else, else's shoes or throw the first stone. You never know what you're going to, through. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody, everybody's going through something, and that's why I get mad at pe people who want to be judgmental because it's like, um, okay, you want to jump on me for my issues, uh, and you want to act like you're the holy one and can throw the first stone, but what about your issues? What about your problems? I mean, Jesus literally said to a crowd of people ready to stone a woman, the, those who are free of sin can throw the first stone. Nobody was free of sin. They all just basically put their stones down and walk away. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I don't, I don't look to, to, to be judgmental. Um, yeah, I might get a little upset and say a lot of different things that, that might have people thinking I'm judging our president or our country or anything like that. But... The best way I can say this is look at it from my standpoint. I grew up in, in, in basically as a Gen Xer. I've seen uh, President Carter, Ronald Reagan, um, both Bushes, um, Obama, Trump, Biden, Clinton. They all had their faults. They all had their faults. No individual person is faultless. But the thing is, is when you're thinking about yourself, when you're thinking that you are the leader of the free world, you're a leader of a major con country, you can't think about yourself. You can't go off and play golf when you should be, you know, behind a desk creating different laws or different decrees or, or different things that, that you feel need to happen in the States are in your country and instead of trying to run off to Scotland and buy somebody's, uh, you know, farmland that's been in their family for God knows who long, how long um, to create a golf course. Um, there's just a lot of things, you know, I'm just taking that as a, as a example. But here, look at, look at me. I've got a lot, I know I've got a lot of faults. It's one of the reasons why I'm not really judgmental. I, I just speak my, my, my mind, and if it comes out judgmental, I'm sorry, um, but I know I've got so many faults that you can't shake a stick at, and um, no, I don't talk about them because they're my problems. I got to deal with them, um, and it's not like I don't want anybody's help, but, you know, that's just, you know, me. Uh, let's see here. Uh... It's just always difficult for me to see some one. Yeah, I you know what, Simone, I, I appreciate that. Um, the thing is, is, what you guys don't see is, yeah, in front of the camera, I'm all nicey, nicey, and let her speak and, and, you know, do whatever she wants to do, even if it means I'm being stepped on or mistreated. But once that camera's off, it's like really you had to say those words. You had to you had to basically throw me on the bus, you know. Or look, you know, I'm tired. I'm sore. Can you not get up and do it yourself? You know, unless it's a nine one one situation, I will get up and do it. That's why 
in the discussion we were having on her live this morning about she was trying to get a hold of me and I had fallen asleep on the couch and she used that find your phone alarm thingy, which is annoying as all get out. Um, you know, I did not like that. I hated that. You know, it's like, how many times have I gone in the bedroom and she's sound asleep? Have I just turned around and left the room, made sure the dog was not going in there, turned around and left the room and let her rest? You know, unless it's a 911 situation where she can't get up off the floor or she finally cracked her spine or her hip or whatever it is. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's a reason to use that. That's, to me, that's something like an emergency situation type usage. Unless you know I'm not in the house and you're trying to find me because my phone shuts itself off where it shuts off its locator beacon. So she can't find me and she has to use that find your phone thing. That's one thing. But calling me from a dead sleep by using that, which is an annoying sound, which being woken up in general makes me mad. Especially if I fell asleep because I needed the rest. What she wanted me to do, she wanted me to come in there to let the dog out of, out of her crib because she was done with her nap. I literally wanted to jump down her throat because, of, because I was like, um, who's the one running around the house trying to get everything done, including food prep and cleaning, and is lucky to get a solid night's worth of sleep? And then you want to wake me up. Because you knew what time I fell asleep. Because you didn't fall asleep until after I did. So, if everybody in the house but her is asleep and I told her I might take a nap. Why wake me up? Really, why wake me up? Uh, let's see here. Um... A lot of people need to practice what they preach. Just saying, not trying to be mean. Oh, no, I understand what you mean, Nellie, and I do agree. But sometimes it's hard to practice what you preach because you're preaching to yourself because nobody else around you wants to listen. And that's another thing that bothers me. So, you know, I do understand what you mean. Because I try to live... A non, a non harmful, loving life. I mean, I, I, anytime, a lot of times Jerry asks me, is there anything you need me to do? I'm, no, I'm fine, you know. But then she wants me to do things, but she doesn't help me do it because it's her project. But then she'll turn around and get mad at me for messing it up or not doing it right. And I'm like, if if you're not happy with what I did, did for you, I'll dismantle it right here, right now, and let you put it together yourself. Or you can just look at it, smile, and say, thank you. I'll do what my dad used to do. He used to say, he used to smile and say, thank you. And then when nobody was looking, he'd fix it. But the thing is, nine times out of ten, whatever my dad was doing, he was doing for himself. Not just for the rest of the family, but primarily for himself, because he was good at taking care of himself. But he was also good at taking care of everybody else at the same time. So, you know, I am not that I'm not that certified, I guess you'd say. Um, Jim, okay, uh, you don't need to ever have to share every... Yeah, no, I know, that's why I don't. There, like I said, there's a lot of things I don't share because, one, it's a personal matter, you know, and um, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean here, but it there's just certain things that's not anybody else's business but mine and my wife's. Um, let's see here. No problem, Sheila. Um, always get great to see you, Jim. Thank you, Nellie. Um, have a good talk with your, oh, Jim, everyone needs help. It's how we accept it. 
Well, that's the thing is, is when I need help, I graciously accept it. But when I have people coming up to me asking me, do I need help? Do I need help? Do I need help? And if I don't, I'm like, no, thank you. I, if I need help, I'll let you know. And then when I do need help and I, and I go looking for, you know, people to help me, everybody's gone or too busy with their own project. Um, that's, that's one of the things that bugs me. Um, if you're going to offer the help, be ready to help me when I need it. Otherwise, don't offer. You know, that's my big thing. So if you're not going to be ready to help me when I need it, don't offer. Now, I, I understand that there's projects that other people have to deal with or the person who has had, is asked to deal with or something like that. And I don't get mad at that, but when they're just gone, they're not anywhere in the room, they're nowhere in the build. you know, you can't find them anywhere in the building, and they practically leave you to run a, the whole show, that's what irritates me, because especially at a job, it's like we're all getting paid to help each other out and do what, you know, take care of our responsibilities. But if you're not going to be there to help when help is needed, why offer? You know, there's a lot of times I don't offer to help anybody because that's how I feel. But when they come to me and go, hey, uh, can you help me out with this? I'm like, sure, let's go. You know? All right, let's see here. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure where I am. Uh, no kicking, you're not too late. Um, I don't even know how long I've been on here. In fact, that's what I was going to check because that's... No, oh, I've been on here for a little over an hour. Um... Dog's not barking, so she's still asleep. Mom probably sleeps still. Um, let's see here. Exactly. Never look. Yeah, you're right there, Nelly. Never look a gift horse in her mouth. That's why um, when I found out through Jay that Simone, or not Simone, I'm sorry. My brain is starting to go to sleep. Um, when um, Mona. When Jerry told me that Mona was giving us a trailer, I, it's not that I, I was like questioning is it legit or not because, you know, you know, I believe my wife, so, but I, I wanted to break down and say, no, 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 that's too, that's too big of a gift. But then I was like, no, you know what? Corner Jerry, Mona and her father talked, and they didn't. They don't need the trailer, so they, between mom and uh, mom and daughter, daughter and father, agreeing to give it to us. I just kind of went, oh, um, 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 okay, um, but I, I cried about it because I was like, oh man, you know, it's like a gift that, that I, I won't even know how to repay it. Um, but gifts like that, you don't, you don't look to repay it. You just gracefully grace gracefully accept it which i'm not always good at that but um it, it's just one of those things yeah yeah um i agree with you simone uh let's see here oh you don't want to get me started in Jerry not being a good wife, that is the one thing I dislike about Jerry. She is nice, but... Nah, I understand kicking. I mean, she's a great person, but... Um, if I had known now, back then, before we got married, I, I, I wouldn't have gone to New York. Um, but as for a person and, you know... She's good at a lot of things. I do say that um, if it wasn't for Jerry Ann, I probably would not be driving or driving as well as I do. Um, my social graces were basically became better um, with her. Otherwise, I'd still be a um, really big introvert. 
and probably not even being probably wouldn't even be on uh, YouTube. Um, one of the things that we do together, um, well, there's a lot of things that we do together that is great, but the well, I'm I'm not going to go into it either kicking because it's it's one of those things where it's like. Um, the type of wife I was, I always thought I would get, um, would be across from a very good spiritual person to um, basically somebody who would bend over backwards for me. Um, I don't say that Jan doesn't bend over backwards, but her, I don't think she wanted to be a. I I don't know if she wanted to be a wife or not. Um, but, um, here we are, you know, 25 years later, and, yeah, we do have our, our issues and whatnot, what couple doesn't, um, but with her current condition, um, with the cancer and whatnot, and, yeah, it, she does use it as a crutch from time to time, but I feel that she could do more if she would just push but not push yourself too hard because she's always like well if I do too much or I push myself too hard I'm going to be in bed for three days I don't know anybody that needs three days to recuperate from a good hard day of work um, so I I don't know sorry my ear itches um, Jay should always be there when you need help, Jim. Yeah. Um, let's see here. She, I don't know, like how Jim is treated and unappreciated by her. Um, I mentioned that earlier, kicking. Yeah, I understand how you guys are, are you know, feel about that, but. Nelly, you're right about that. Um, uh, easy, you know what? Um, go easy, you're not his. Okay. Um, well, no. Um, there is two sides of the story. There always is. Um, you know, I learned this a long time ago. Um, but, see, my deal isn't... Um, just how she is, um, because when she was active, um, we did a lot more together, and there was a lot more comrade, camaraderie and fun and whatnot, um, but I just wish she, um, uh, I just wish she could do more. I wish she'd push, I wish she would push herself a little bit harder not to the point of breaking tire, uh, breaking, her, you know, down and 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 basically not being able to function, but it's just, yeah. Uh, um, Nellie, I do love my wife, but just sometimes I, especially lately with her wanting to call out from her appointments for one reason or another, I just. I literally want to give her a good swift kick in the pants, but, you know, you can only do so much with a person who become, who either is paralyzed by her own thoughts, basically, her own fears, which, like I said before, I, I don't fear much. I mean, when my dad was alive, yeah, I feared him because out of respect more than, you know, because of who, you know, what he could be doing to me. My father was not a very, um, he was a very kind and loving person, but, uh, you know, when I was out of line, he had no hesitations to give me a spanking. Um, I do remember one time when I was acting up and because I wanted one of my favorite cereals and my dad said, we don't have the money for it, or we can't afford it or something like that. And I got out of control, and he gave me a, you know, not a, like, hardcore swat, 
but he gave me enough of a swat to, to put me back in my place. And some little old lady goes, I should report you to the cops. You're beating your kids. And he turned around and looked at that little old lady and went, he ain't broken. He ain't bruised. I brought him into the world. I'll take him out. Um, you know, so, of course, he was bring, uh, born and raised in Southside Chicago during the 40s, um, 40s and 50s. Um... Let's see here. Yes, Simone's girl, I am taking on a lot. Um, well, there are days where I I look at her and go, um, I've already got a list of things for uh, for to do for the day. Um, made that list up the night before. I'm not deviating, you know, not unless it's a nine not a nine one one deviation. And she'll be like, okay, uh, just trying to make sure, um, you know, that I try to get her into my uh, my workload. And I said, we'll see, you know. Uh, hey, Brenda, haven't seen you since this No, you weren't on there this morning. Um, it was very nice of you to unlock Diane. Uh, thank you. She is trying to pop in and say hi, but her comment won't post. Will you please check that? Um, I don't know why it won't post. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Diane. Um, I, I don't know why it's posting. And I had to, uh, I had to tell Jerry a lie to help, get her to help me because it's a long process about going on on the internet and doing through doing things through the internet and da 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 da, um, but um, Diane, you can post your comments um, after the live, um, and I will look at them and answer them, and then I will try to look into why it's not letting you um, go in. So, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. That was such a shame, Sheila. Sending per... Okay, she, I must have missed something. Um, what happened in Sydney? I never got the... I, I never got the full 911. Um, or full 411. I'm sorry. Ah... <sighs> Yes, my daughter was at the mall on Friday, so it was very close to home. So sad there is not more help for people with mental illnesses that it was to get to that point. Oh, okay. Um, oops. Yeah, so, I'm, like I said, I didn't, I didn't read the news on that, but... Yeah, if you got a lot of mental issues, you probably should not be roaming the streets. I mean, I've got my set of mental issues, but they're not, like, harmful to others. Um, if I were to break down, it'd probably be more harmful to myself, which unfortunately would end up harming Jerry indirectly. But, um... Uh, Jim, sometimes I worry about trying to re relocate to a place with a good cancer center when it feels like sometimes Dre avoids going to the doctors, um, as it is. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do have some issues, uh, with her doing all that, um, I have tried to get her to talk to a counselor, and she doesn't want to. Um, she acts like she doesn't need one, and I'm like, um, we all need a counselor or somebody like that uh, at, at least one point in time, especially with Jerry going through all this stuff, and I am... Um, I would want her to go to one, but I can't force her to do anything and I don't it's not my way
Yeah, she doesn't like talking to counselors. Um, um, yeah, um, I'm thinking about doing that. Um, as soon as, as uh, probably should do it before it calms down, you know, because sometimes you need to just get out and in the middle of the storm and relax. Um, cause that's what I feel like I'm in the middle of right now is a storm. Um, let's see here. We can come up with some pretty good advice. I hope you take some of it, Jim. Um, I do listen to uh, a lot of different people's advice. Um, sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. It really depends on... If it's a good day or a bad day, <laughs> you know, and uh, I can never tell. But um, I do spend a good half hour in here in the morning with all but two or three lights off. So there's no bright, heavy duty um, high beams like the ones are behind me. Um, there's my Himalayan sea salt. There's my little water feature that has a spinning orb on top that changes colors. And then I have a light bulb on a lamp that looks like flickering flames. So, um, well, that's the thing is, is I don't know. She says she wants to try. Well, if she tries and doesn't like it, I'm going to be like, well, that's, that's fine. But this will be my getaway is to be able to go take the trailer, go camping for a night or two. You know, and of course, if I do something like that, I'm going to be like, do not try to get me to come home unless it's a 911. And um, if I'm not going straight to the hospital to meet you there because of the ambulance took you there, um, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to get upset. And next time I'll just leave my devices at home or just turn them off. That's my AC coming on. Um, let's see here. Nelly, you have a question? Um, let's see here. Yes, let's keep giving good advice. Thank you for looking into it for Diane, Jim. Yes, I was at your live this morning. Okay. I... I they, a lot of the comments were going by so fast I couldn't catch everything, and I was not exactly fully awake, but um, I'm glad you made it. Uh, Jim, do you have a way to seek out group of shadow worker in your area? Maybe you could meet new people and socialize. I was actually thinking about it. We have one um, metaphysical shop here in Rolla. Um, I do not know if uh, they have information on um, like-minded uh, groups. Um, there's a problem when you cancel so many appointments. Yeah, um, that's what I'm worried about. Um, this is a good live for you, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see here. Because I might have to get off of it soon because I've probably been on it for two hours. Um, or something like that. I don't know. I have to check. Uh, you can't wait for the storm to end, Jim, before you take care of yourself. The waves will still will always keep coming. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to work more and more on self-care and spending, trying to spend more time to myself. Um, even though Jerry keeps on saying that she wants me to spend more time with her, which is kind of like, I understand her point because I do spend most of my time either cleaning or just sitting back and relaxing. Um, because, you know, I'm starting to lose it. I'm, I'm starting to lose that, that, that gumption to, uh, do what needs to be done. Uh. Hey, Jim, you should take road trip and come up to Rhode Island for a weekend. You could park your camper right 
in backyard. I have lots of land and lots of woods and animals, so you would love it here. I'm pretty sure I would. Um, I've never been to Rhode Island, so it would be a new place of interest. Um, we had talked, uh, me and Jerry had talked um, about the two of us living in upstate New York near a friend of hers, and my only concern was how much is it going to cost? Because if it's going to cost us all um, every penny we have, um, no, because I don't want to be house what my wife calls house poor. Uh, yes, Jim, you need time away and shouldn't be disrupted. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely want to do that. Was just wondering why they were calling you Jimmy, that's all. Um, actually, <laughs> when I was younger, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Kicking knows this from, from one of my um, stories about myself. Um, hold on, hold on. Um, when I was younger, when, when my dad was alive, um, he was Jim, I was Jimmy. Um, neither one of us were called James because that was like for, for, um, paperwork because my father was James Daniel and I was James David and in the military, <laughs> something my dad used to get mad about, in the military, they don't see the whole middle name, they just see the initial. So I was considered James D. Henson Jr. And my father used to get mad and said, he's not Jr., and, well, the rest of it I won't say because it's inappropriate. But when my father, pa um, but my family called me Jimmy. So uh, my family called me Jimmy. And then after my father died, I took on, I took on Jim. Now, Jimmy is like a family name. And not that I get mad at other people for calling me Jimmy. Because there's a lot of people out there that are not blood related um, that call me Jimmy, that are uh, either really close friends of the family or somebody I've known for a while. Um, so that's it. Um, take, take your own advice, Jim, and just do that. Um, okay, yeah. Because I'm his friend and I can't thank you, Nelly. Nelly, you could be, <laughs> you could easily call me Jimmy. Um, you know, because you've been on here since the get-go. But um, every time somebody asks me, what what should we call you? I'm like, well, you can call me by my birth my birth name, Jim. You can call me by my family name or, or my preferred name, Jim. Or if I decide to call you friend, uh, close friend or family, you can call me Jimmy. Uh, but don't call me Jimmy until you ask. But, um, yeah. Uh, Kicking has been a good friend. So have you, Nelly. Um, so, you know, Jim, Jimmy, um, it, it don't bug me. Um, not unless you're somebody that pisses me off and then I'm like, you don't have the right to call me that. Um, but no, I, I, I go either way. I'm not a big like, oh, you can only call me what I tell you to call me, you know. Which, if I go into the spirituality of my, my, my Native American shamanism and what I was called by a Native American shaman, which was White Wolf, um, you know, you know, but, you know, I don't use that uh, title um, often. Uh, I don't think it matters what we call him, ladies, as long as we are supportive of him and looking out for his best interests, which I know you both are. Yes, uh, Sheila, um, you guys do look out for my best interest um, a lot. I just, uh, sometimes I'm too stubborn to listen. Um, that's unfortunately part of my genetics, I guess, I don't know, I mean, is it the Norwegian side? Is it the Danish side? Is it the Swedish side? Is it the German side? Is it the Irish side? I don't know. I just got a lot of of ancestral DNA that, as I used to joke about, yeah, most of my ancestral DNA, what do we like to do? Get drunk and get in fights. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, never gotten drunk, which impresses a lot of people. Because a lot of people are like, damn, you just drank a lot of liquor. Yeah, and... Um, was it the one time that me and Jerry went out and I ended up drinking five um, Long Island iced teas from Applebee's and I walked pretty much a straight line out of the building, which people were surprised because a lot of people were looking at me like, um, that's a lot of liquor he's drinking over there. But, you know, not that I'm impressed by it, just, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, some people could handle their um, their alcohol. Some people can't, and I believe it's a lot to do with their DNA. Because I'm I'm not really a big drinker. Um, I do drink to celebrate, but I don't drink just to drink. Um, let's see here. Uh, if you are there in the same house, that should be enough. Bring together nonstop can be too much yeah yeah i i think that's part of the issue i'm having is i've been in stuck in this house for almost a year without an outside job and i'm trying to i'm a combination of waiting to see what the doctors tell me and so far they basically said um no long-term standing on your feet well that girl that goes just about everything i can do except for one job which is security work um, basically sitting behind a, a, on a, behind a computer watching a bunch of computer screens or sitting in a guard shack at one of these, um, private neighborhoods. Um, we've got one that's basically a se senior citizen homing, uh, housing community, uh, com yeah, com housing community, and they have like a gate guard. He just sits there and either directs you where to go or... Whatever he does, I don't know. Um, all right, hold on. I just don't trust some people on the internet. I really don't want to get into it. Yeah, I understand that, Nelly. There's, there are some people that just like, no, go away, please. Just, just go away. Um... Let's see here. No problem, Nelly. I understand. It's hard to trust everyone on the net. You never really know sometimes that person's motivations are to be friends. Oh, that's just me. Um, Jim, how about this week you take time for yourself? Whoa! Those comments went flying by. Um, like you said, if there is no emergency... You deserve it. Yep. Uh, she was right. Nelly, what does kicking call him? Oh, okay. Um, I'm not going to get into it on Jim's live. Um, let's not go there, folks. I, I really... Uh, I don't want any arguing between people. Um, that's one of the things I don't like about, um, it's not that I don't like the lives, it's just I don't like people getting into debates or anything like that. Um, Jim, I hope you will take Simone's Girl advice and get some time for yourself this week, both of you both in your room and some, maybe some in nature, yeah. Uh, Five Long Island ice teas, Jim. It's amazing you could walk at all. I did. You know. Might have had a small stagger, but I wasn't falling, you know, like falling over my own feet. But, yeah. Um, 
I had those five uh, Long Island iced teas, and um, Jerry drove us home because there was no way I'd be driving. I, I was lucky to walk. Um, Sheila, what? Say goodnight. Oh, uh, well. Okay. I, no, I understand why. <laughs> okay, night, Sheila. Um, I'm pretty sure everything will uh, go. You guys are too funny. Um, which is one of the things I like um, on my channel is to be able to get people to laugh, whether it's at themselves. Um, I even don't care if people laugh at me because sometimes I laugh at myself. Well, like I said, I keep on saying it. I, I don't know if it's a joke or not, but I mean, because of my ancestral DNA, most of those places, except for maybe Britain, um, their two hobby, their, their two biggest things is drinking and fighting. And then modern day life came along and it's just drinking. Um, <laughs> except for maybe once in a while somebody says something or does something wrong in the bar and there's a bar brawl. Which is one thing I found out about. Um, I heard this story about a, oh shoot. I heard a story about, um, in, in, I don't know if it was just in Ireland, but, um, in Europe, I'm going to say in Europe, I, um, I know that th their, their police department don't use handguns, you know, they basically yell at you. Now, there was this bar that was almost shut down because they had this really big bar brawl over, um, over their their two different uh, two different um, teams that represented two parts of, of I guess it was two parts of Ireland or two parts of one of the big counties, and um, there was a big old bar brawl about it, and um, they didn't even call the cops. What they did was um, the the bartender and the bouncer basically just started grabbing all the people and throwing them out of the bar, and I guess somebody got. A broken arm or some kind of injury and they wanted to sue and the bar owner basically said you get you don't have a case you were drunk you could have fallen when you were walking outside and um when they basically took it to civil court or local court whatever you call it um basically the judge wanted to look into the bar because of the big old brawl and how many people who might have gotten hurt or how they got hurt or whatever. And the, the, the local magistrate, as they call it out there, looked into it, looked at security cameras and realized that what happened was two other people got tossed out before this one person. And when this one person landed just right, um, he kind of like landed and twisted and it caused his collarbone to break. And so the local magistrate and the judge went, there's no case. You know, you fell wrong. Or you, basically, it happened after you left the premises, as they put it. And I just kind of went, oh. So basically, he got tossed out of the bar. He broke his collarbone. But because he was no longer in the premises, when he broke the collarbone, they threw it out. They basically threw the case out. And I just kind of went, dang. I guess you got to be tough to live in, in in Ireland because, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, you got to realize that, that, especially in Britain, every so often, Manchester United, yeah. Um, yes, I'm a big fan of them. They're a, soccer team they um 
they have issue the 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 fans have issues because um well this one time I heard about it. Manchester lost a uh, match by one point. And that point should not have been given I I watched this whole thing. The point should not have been given to the other team because the other team got the soccer ball into the net one second after the buzzer. But they gave it to the other team anyhow. And, well, Manchester fans are known for being rowdy. So they um, basically rioted and they had to get the riot teams, uh, the horse cops. Basically, they had to get anything and everything that they have designed for riots. Which I thought was funny because there were more fans of Manchester United than there were police officers. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's see. Uh, <laughs> well, if I could handle a long trip like that, um, I might think about it. Granted, Jerry Ann might have a fit, but there are times where I, I just want to be like, hey, you've gone by yourself, I don't know how many times, to Texas. I think I should be allowed to go someplace by myself, of course. Jerry Ann would be like, well, how well do you know this person? Blah, 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 blah. Where are you going to stay? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be like, I'll clean up the back end of the van and I'll put my, uh, my sleeping bag and whatnot, and, uh, you know, put the the seats down in the back of a minivan and set up a place to sleep in the minivan. Besides, if I'm up, if I'm up in upstate New York where it gets nice and cool, I am pretty sure if I um, put those, we have uh, like these screens that go over your door so you can close the door window or open the door window all the way and keep the um, air flowing through without letting bugs in. Um, but, yeah. Um, Jim, if you do if you do something for yourself this week, please let us know. Oh, I probably will. Um, uh, well, if I do it this week, I'm going to have to do it Monday, unless the weather changes overnight, because we're supposed to get cooler weather with chances of rain. Hmm. Maybe I'll just take my book, my book and my notepad, and go to the library and sit in the library where it's nice and quiet, and just borrow one of their. They've got these these um, rooms that uh, I don't know if um, the computer, you have to pay for the computer, but they, they've got these rooms that are just basically, you can close the door and it's totally silent. I can probably go in there and spend a good couple of hours just reading. Uh, yes, Jim, I'm, I'd really love you to vlog or live to us Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip a bunch of these. I'm sorry, guys, because it's, um, I've been on here for quite some time. I'm surprised my, my dear wife hasn't paged me. Well, that's what I was saying. It's one, you know, like, I used to take Sundays as my day off to do whatever I wanted, whether it was play games or sit in here and read. And, and I'm thinking that if I could take, like, the Sunday, I don't know if the library would be open, but go to the library or go to Starbucks and get um, a latte or something like that. Um, what was it I used to drink? The, the Tai Chi. The Chi, not Tai Chi. Chi. Um, is it Tai Chi? I don't know, but it was a type of 
chi latte, cold. And I used to love those. I haven't done those in a long time. Um, so, but yeah, um, I think that's, I think uh, I'll, I'll put that as a day of just respite. Um, Jerry would probably understand if, you know, I'm at the library or, or Starbucks or someplace like that where I can sit down and just enjoy a, a peaceful drink or a, a peaceful time to, to, to read and write and I know the one thing I want to do oh I don't know if you guys were on here when I did this but I'm gonna redo it ah, come on I told my wife that I need another journal. She's like, another journal? I'm like, well, all my other journals are either being used or packed away. And I said, I want, an, I need a new one so I can start, you know, a book of shadows of my own. Now, I've only used it once so far to journal. That was last night. Um, yeah. Um, and what I ended up getting, or what she got for me, once she understood what I was going to use it for, is this nice leather-bound 365-page notebook with a tree on it. You probably can't see it because of the lighting. It's, it looks like a normal everyday tree with the sun coming out from behind it. Um, I'm wondering if I... I'm wondering if I had the right tool if I can just burn or edge, burn or carve, something on the cover. But um, I'm glad I got it because now I can really start to work on, um, uh-oh, my phone's dying. Let me see if I can plug it in. Um, come on. Okay, there we go. Um, so, I started writing in it yesterday, and can I say it was just a, um, like, I guess you can just call it, like, I started, started, like, journaling. And, yeah, these are my favorite kinds of book, uh, journals. Hard, leather-bound, they're not flimsy. Um, it's got a pin holder if I decide to stick a pin in there. This one has, I don't know if you can tell, but three different tabs, markers. And I looked at them yesterday and I was like, oh, that's, these are, that's great. And I'm like, oh, wait, dark green, brown, and black. And I'm just like, I can start really working on myself and really really like write my journals and specific uh jar spells that i use the most or make the most or you know that kind of stuff so why do you feel guilty i don't feel guilty actually i really don't i mean i feel guilty that i pa uh, packed away all my extra journals but most of them are like three ring binder or not three ring binder, um, spiral binder or flimsy. They're not hardcover and they're not big, you know, so. Yeah, I, I'm def definitely thinking about that. Um, but like the other book I, the other book that I have uh, written down um, some some um, jar spells and whatnot um, it, it's small and thin and I'm like oh that's great for like you know a Gwim I'm gonna pronounce it wrong Gwim Rar see what I mean I can't pronounce it um, sorry about that but that's great for like every, if everybody can look at it and use it, but like this big one, it's like no, 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 that, that's personal. 
you stay out of that stuff because that's that's my personal writings, my personal thoughts, things like that. But anyhow, um, let me check my time. Come on. Oh yeah, almost at two hours. So I think what I'm gonna do at this time before I sign off is, is there any last minute questions? I mean, I know I've been running off at the mouth and trying to read your uh, comments and answer them. Um, oh, there you go, Jim, uh, Jerry. Um, well, I don't, I don't say that I feel like a ball, I have a ball and chain. I just feel like um, there are times I just can't get up and get out. You know, I, I, it's, and it has nothing to do with Jerry because I know Jerry has already said multiple times, if you feel like you need to get out for a while, just get out and let me know. And um, I, uh, I, part of me is like feeling guilty uh, of doing that because it's like, what if I'm out and I'm on the other side of town or in an area of town that you have to go one way to get to another way to get to that way to finally get to your main route to get to your destination. Um, you know, it, it, it's like, <sighs> Jerry's not guilt tripping me and staying home. That's me, that's my thing. Because I'm afraid that if I do get out and something happens, I'm gonna feel guilty of that. Uh, of not being here when I should have been. But yeah, I, I'm thinking that I should sit down um, and um, uh, like plan a day of just like going to the library and being there for a couple hour, an hour or two or more and um, read, <laughs> read, write, whatever. Um, so, well, yeah, um, the nine, yeah, the whole nine one one thing is one thing. Mom's here too, so, I know, not much mom can do, but mom's here to, if, if Jerry has to be run to the hospital, mom can always call me and say, hey, meet us at the hospital. Um, but it's my hang up. It's my, like... Should I go? Should I stay? What should I do? Um, I mean, she gives me plenty of room and time to, to be in this room. But sometimes it's like I need to get out. Yeah, she does encourage me to have my own time, but I don't always get out of the house. Um, so... Yeah, so, uh, I mean, when was the last time the Jerry was at the hospital? Well, uh, that's been a while. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's been at least two, well, it's been at least uh, two years or so since she was admitted into the hospital for her cancer. Um, and then they ended up transfer transferring her to St. Louis. Uh, but her wound care people, uh, her wound care, uh, people are, uh, 1221, okay. Her wound care people, um, are in a part of the, um, it's basically part of the hospital building, but it's got their own entrance and their own parking area. Um, uh, Yeah. Um, I mean, the fun thing about Rolla is everything is within five to ten minutes. Um, I think it's like maybe eight minutes from here to the library. Um, that kind of thing.
Oh, okay. Um, I couldn't remember the 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 first time you were at the hospital because the only thing I remember was you getting rushed to the hospital in an ambulance because something happened. Um, but yeah. Um, all right. Uh, it's been almost an hour. Actually, two hours. Uh, um. Oh, okay. He he admitted you on the spot. Okay. See, a lot of those, a lot of things from two thousand twenty one are kind of a, a fuzz because everything was happening at once, and I was, you know. Uh, oh, you were oh, oh, just in New York. Like I said, I certain things just kind of get blocked out because of my nerves and whatnot. Okay, but anyhow, um, I'm pretty sure Jay came on here to let me know what time it was and how long I've been on. Um, is mom awake? Um, thank you, Nelly. Um, but anyhow, I'm going ahead and go sign off. Um, it's been real fun. I mean, this was a great live. So, you know, but um yeah i'll look into some of the things that we talked in uh we talked about and um okay um and um yes i will try to take a day to go to the hospital or not the hospital god <laughs> to a library uh so Hopefully, today's Sunday, so maybe Tuesday, I will try to do a, another live. Um, and yeah, I will try to do more vlogs um, for, you know, all the kind of purposes and reasons. So, you guys have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend as it is. Uh, no, mom, mom has a weird, uh, sleep cycle, uh, and I think part of it's because of Vector, she, um, is retired, and she can do whatever she wants, and sometimes it's, um, she just has a hard time sleeping all night long, so, but she always takes, she always takes a nap after breakfast, so, breakfast, brunch, whatever it was we had today. So anyhow, um, like I said, I will see you guys on the flip side. Bye. Oh, come on.